At a time when we need more strong journalists, news organizations across the country are continuing to shed staff. Pew Research numbers as of last year found U.S. newsroom employment was down 26 percent from 2008 across newspaper, radio, broadcast TV, cable, digital outlets. But some outlets are bucking that trend. Like the Report for America program launched back in 2017, it's put journalists in newsrooms across the country with the mission of covering underserved issues and communities. It's an initiative of the Ground Truth Project here at GBH, and soon co-founder Charlie Sennett will be dedicating a lot more time to this and other Ground Truth editorial initiatives as he steps down as president and CEO of the nearly tenured organization to focus on his role as editor-in-chief and get back to his roots in the on-the-ground journalism. Charlie joins me now with a big smile. Mile. Obviously, he's been waiting for a long time. <laughs> so, uh, uh, newsrooms shutting down, there's colossal numbers. You go in the opposite direction. I think like 1,500 journalists have worked through Ground Truth. Is there something that is replicable elsewhere, or is this a Ground Truth anomaly? No, there is. This is, this is a really big idea. Um, Report for America is a service program. So those of your viewers who know Teach for America, mm -hmm. this, is, this is Teach for America for journalism. Report for America is very much a service program. And the idea is there's a tremendous yearning, particularly among emerging journalists, young people, to serve communities. Journalism is ultimately about serving communities. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is there's a crisis. We're seeing two newspapers a week die in the United States of America. We now have more than 2,000 communities that don't have local news organizations, that crisis in local news becomes a crisis for democracy. We are seeing a whole new generation that wants to be part of serving these communities. So the call to service works very well here in the states, and that's why we've had such luck really scaling the program as dramatically How many as we states have are you in? We're in every state. You are? Yes. Who's paying for this thing? Good question. This is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is the part of my job that I'm not going to be able to give up, which is, which is we, we are a nonprofit. We raise funding, so we have... You pay for the whole thing when you assign a reporter to an outlet? We, we pay for half of the reporter's salary, and then we help the news organization raise the other half locally. So what this is about is we raise funding from big national foundations like the Knight Foundation, uh -huh. like MacArthur Foundation. We have other funders. We have individual donors. We pull together national funding for half the salary, and then we help these news organizations go into the community foundations, the smaller foundations in their backyard, telling those community foundations, you have to care about your local news organization. Because if you don't, your community is going to have three things happen. Voter participation is going to plummet. Polarization is going to increase. And really interestingly, bond ratings will drop because banks will not invest in those communities that don't have anyone watching the store. So we are trying to well, say... That's to, really, it makes total sense. Right? But so, so the death of the American yeah. newspapers has taken its toll on American democracy, and we're trying to counter that trend. And Report for the World is a variation on the same theme, and you're in a bunch of countries now. Yes, where? That's right. We've seen such success in Report for America, we thought, what, what if we brought our international reporting experience? Ground Truth's always been about international reporting. What if we replicated the Report for America model globally? We've had great success in Brazil, mm -hmm. where a very similar problem with a local news crisis mm -hmm. is happening. We're in Nigeria, also very similar, that in the middle belt where the Christian and Muslim divide is, the newspapers that are there can literally save lives by dispelling rumors that get villages clashing. We're there in Nigeria, and we're in India, where there's a big kind of conglomerate of big media in the big cities. But the poorer regions, particularly in the south, do not have local news organizations. So we're there, and we're going to grow. We're going to expand in the next year. Ukraine is on your list? From it's on our list. We've just, we've just gotten all the applications in for an expansion into Eastern Europe and probably into Mexico. But we're looking at applications right now. So Report for the World is on a growth pattern. Report for America is as well today. We announced the opening of applications for more newsrooms for Report for America. So you can literally, if, you're, if you know someone with a newsroom that's suffering out there, there are some right here in our Commonwealth of Massachusetts and across New England that need help, and we're I want, there. I want to talk about Report for the World. I mean, there are a lot of dangerous places. We'll put it, you've been everywhere, from yep. Iraq to Afghanistan to Tahrir Square when it was all happening, that sort of thing. You also had a close relationship with James Foley, and I assume mm -hmm. everybody knows that mm -hmm. he was uh, abducted in Syria, I think, in 2012, yep. Yep. and obviously murdered in 2014. He's There he is. He's pretty central to your mission and work, no? Jim uh, Foley is in my heart every day. He is our true north because Jim was about service. Jim did two tours with Teach for America. Mm. He taught literacy in prisons. Then he worked in a women's shelter, and then he became a journalist. And Jim, 
for those of us who were lucky enough to know Jim and work with him, he had a beautiful spirit of service and of wanting to be there to give people a chance to give their voice, you know, out to the world. And he was so committed to it. So Jim is urgently involved in everything we do because he gave us that motivation. But also, just, just to remind everyone, I am known more for that work in Iraq and Afghanistan, particularly here in Boston, mm -hmm. where I was the Boston sure. Globe's Middle East correspondent. But it's so important to remember, I began international reporting as a police reporter in New York City with a really bad mullet haircut. <laughs> and I, and I, I was a police reporter responding 1993 to the first World Trade Center bombing. That led to becoming a Middle East correspondent. So I think local reporting has always got a global sensibility to it if you think about it. And I want to create that mission. That's in our mission. Jim Foley had that too, this idea that local and global are woven together. But Foley, sadly, is not only not the last. I mean, is, you know, in Ukraine almost every day, in Palestine yep. uh, a, a few uh, days ago. I know you do training for your young reporters, which yep. has got to be terrifying from how to tie a tourniquet to that sort of thing. Yep. On a related note, everybody knows about Jamal Khashoggi being executed in the yep. most vicious way at the Saudi uh, consulate in Istanbul. I want to play for you what uh, President Biden said today when asked whether he would bring up specifically the Khashoggi murder engineered by the crown prince with whom we'll be meeting in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Here's what the president had to say. My views on Khashoggi have made been absolutely positively clear. Um, and I have never been quiet about talking about human rights. The question that I'm, the reason I'm going to Saudi Arabia, though, is much broader, is to promote U.S. interest. I don't want to be unfair. We yeah. only have 30 seconds. It sounds to me like the answer is no, I will not be bringing it up. Well, what's your it, quick uh, reaction? Really, to really that? unsatisfactory answer from the president and what he's going to say to the crown prince about the murder of, of Jamal, who I knew and who, I, who I, I, I had a chance to interview many times and always was the person I went to when I wanted to understand Saudi Arabia. Look, he was in Israel, Palestine, where a journalist has been shot allegedly by the Israeli forces. There's no doubt about that. The question whether it's intentional is okay. the open question. Yes. Shot and killed yes. wearing a press vest. I know that. And he goes from that country where journalists are risking their lives to a country that That's murdered a point. journalist in cold blood and that he can't see a continuity there about the need to protect journalism and protect the work we do in a free press around the world. It's kind of baffling because I know it's in his heart. Why isn't he getting clear about saying it? It's kind of sad to watch him focus on national security to the point where his words about Human rights run a little bit hollow if you can't see the free press as a critical human right we need in this world if we're going to have he, a democracy. I hope he gets there, and it's great work you're doing. Charlie, good Thanks, luck Jim. in your new role. Take Thank care. you. Lots of luck, Charlie Thank you. Senate.